Hey guys, we are back. We're going to be doing some more work on the Mustang. We're going to be continuing with the uh, paddle shifter install. So uh, last time I showed you guys this, um, basically I had just gotten the steering wheel all set up, got the paddle shifters installed on there, but not actually wired into the controller. Um, af off camera, I did actually get it all working. It was very temporary set up. I'll just show you guys what I have. It is kind of torn up in there because I'm doing it legit now so uh it, the paddle shifters did work i use it when we did the dyno video and also the uh tuning for lido we needed to do third gear pulls so i just use the power paddle shifters this is kind of the setup i had you can see it is completely torn up in here right now because i need to be able to route wires up so imagine the steering wheels on like this no airbag or anything like that i had this long wire four wires that go to the ground and power for the paddle shifters uh two of the power sorry the two grounds together and then power individually and then they come through here and it is very complicated i'll have to show you guys the uh wiring diagram but it goes to this switch which has this resistor on it and then down to the computer the blue uh, dark blue and light blue wire you can see there's the light blue right there and uh then it goes to the actual computer ground so I'm going to be doing this much more legit here because before I turn the wheel and this would just wrap around and it just looks like a rat's nest. You've seen it in pretty much all our videos of the Mustang. So my plan here is to wire into the clock spring and the clock springs in the garage. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this wire goes to the steering wheel controls. Uh, this isn't the right steering wheel for this car, so I never really got them working. Uh, they did light up, uh, but you know. That I'd say paddle shifter is a bit cooler than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this pretty much entirely. Uh, I think the only thing it does might need to work around is this is the car horn. You push on this and that does the horn. I don't want to lose my horn. But uh, all I need are three wires because I can wire the grounds into a single one. So three, so two power and one ground. And uh, I'm just using a continuity test to figure out where they go because the clock spring will sit behind here. It's removed at the moment. And uh, basically the steering wheel plugs into it and then it's like a reel of wires inside. So when you turn it, you know, all your steering wheel controls don't get bound up. This wire right here goes into the bottom of the clock spring. And then you saw on that steering wheel, it, go, it plugs into the top. So I'd be running those wires into this, I just need to find where they terminate up on the top of the clock spring. I'll just go and go in the garage and show you guys. Here's a clock spring out right now. I got it all taped up so it doesn't spin. I've set up these. These are tiny pins that I have spare that I'm plugging in just to make it easier to figure out which one is which. Then I have my multimeter set to the continuity level. And then I can just plug them in here. So this one already already plumbed. Let's see if I can get this on one hand and you'll actually hear it uh, making noise for continuity and uh, one means it's open no continuity and anything other than one is continuity so you actually kind of hear it so I know which this wire goes to I know that uh, looking at the harness on the steering wheel the top right two pins are for the grounds so I'll need to figure that out there are eight pins down here, and then at the top one, there's only five. This one was plugged up, so I'm going to see if there's any pins I can use on this. And uh, just go from there. I just need to pretty much map which ones are which, so I can know which ones I need to wire in. So once I figure out this, I can go ahead and cut the wires on the steering wheel, route them up through to it, and then mount the switch somewhere in the interior and uh, just tidy up everything and then I'll show you guys the paddle shifters working. And guys, before we continue with this, I just want to say we have a lot of content on the Mustang. If you haven't seen it already, uh, we got it supercharged. We have a whole series on installing this Department of Boost uh, supercharger kit. So if you're interested in supercharging your three valve Mustang or even your Coyote, the main Coyote kits, be sure to check out that series. We also have the 6R80 swap. So six speed auto out of the 11 to 14 Mustangs. So. Uh, pretty sweet car and adding paddle shifters with the uh, 6R80 swap is really really something special so uh, be sure to check out those videos should be in the description and you can also check our playlist and also if you don't mind uh, I really appreciate it if you guys subscribed. I guys made a little bit of a discovery so I mapped out the ones that have the existing harness and they go in there so one goes to seven on this one right here and uh, two to five and uh, three to four 
one thing. So this one is completely unused. This actually had a cap on it. And then nothing plugs in here. So mapping these out, this actually goes to here. So I do have uh, a couple options. I can use this, which has an existing harness. I would just need to cut the line and then splice the pile shifter lines into it. And then down here, cut the line here and then splice it going to the computer. Or I can take more of these little wire taps that I have. I have this uh, big harness here that has like a bunch of them. And looking at it, I have one, two, three, four, five, six maybe usable, which I think that's all I would need because I said I only needed three wires. Um, so I can map these out. I, they, I wouldn't say necessarily be as secure because they can easily just fall out. I'd rather have a harness I can clip in. No idea where I'd even be able to find that. So I'm going to see about using these ones because like I said I only need to use three and it has the existing wiring harness it'll be easier I can just cut the line and use these wired splicing taps to plug into them but uh, it is good to know that I have these in case I need to like if I you know unplug these and for whatever reason my horn doesn't work or something like that um, then I can I can fix that also these are completely unused so it's not gonna interfere with any other type of system so uh, yeah I think I'm just gonna see about that this is, you know, completely separate. These are for the airbags. I don't have to worry about those if I cut one of these or use one of those. So I might end up using one of these. Just going to see how it goes here, and uh, we'll be back. All right, guys, we are back. So i gotten these all wired in. Those are those connections that uh, I, sh I showed you guys that I was going to be using. I have the power for the right side, the upshift on the right pin, the very far right. I got the power for the left downshift on the very far left pin, and then I have the ground sitting on uh, the pin that is, I guess, number three in line. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one, three, and then six. And uh, these correspond exactly the same to this right here. So one through six. So that should be easy to wire in. I uh, test fitted it with the airbag and it fits perfectly fine these are kind of loose but they do grip it and uh, with the airbag in place i don't foresee it backing out at all and then uh, i mean it's designed to not move at all when you turn the wheel i'm pretty certain it's going to stay secure i'm going to go ahead and plug the airbag back in and kind of button up up here because there's really nothing else i need to do on this side i'm just going to tidy it make sure this is all connected and then all these lines that come from the controller have marked right power, left power, and then uh, ground for the center because they both combine into a single ground. Uh, that's all you need those three pins. I'll take three pins and connect them at the bottom and then route them up through here. And then that'll be a bit cleaner. And then ultimately I'll get this, uh, ultimately I'll get these uh, butt connectors out of here, have co straight connectors and I'll be able to put this toggle switch in. I'm thinking about putting the toggle switch somewhere down here where it won't really be seen and I can easily just flip it and then I can go to my paddles. I also have my uh, push start kind of just in that area. So it'll be pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue work on this. It's really hot in the car, so I'm not gonna show much of the actual like work being done, but kind of just show you guys what is going on here. So. We just got the two power lines and then the two grounds going into one, so three pins, using the clock spring because it's designed to rotate so I won't have any type of binding up of uh, cabling and uh, we should be good to go. All right guys, a little update. I got uh, the line from the, the computer for the right pin power or the six pin six power. And then uh, we have these other two, just the ground and then the left power. This is where it kind of gets a little bit of comp a little bit complicated. So uh, this red line is going up here and it tees off into two for both computer grounds. And then we have the other blue line. Uh, you can disregard this. This is a different line for a trans brake. Don't worry about that one. So just these two lines. So this one that goes and splits into the two grounds and then this blue line. So the one that is from the computer grounds comes down here up into another T that goes to one of the prongs on the switch. The other one goes to the left power. And then this one where it has a blue line coming from the uh, computer, it comes up in here to one of the prongs, tees off. And then this goes to the ground. So I'm gonna maybe have to redo this a little bit, maybe just cut the lines and uh, re-plumb them up there. I'm actually gonna be done for today. Um, I got some other stuff to do and it's getting really hot. So I'm definitely gonna be picking it up back tomorrow, but uh, tomorrow I should easily be able to fire it up. Just gotta 
plumb these two lines here. I might just cut them and then reinvent it over there basically. Uh, drill this uh, switch on into the panel where I'll be able to reach it. And uh, that should be about it, but we're getting really close. It's basically just these two lines that need to split into this. Um, need to save this resistor and get it set up properly. Like I said, this was just incredibly temporary. Otherwise I got the uh, whole steering wheel back on. Everything seems good. I actually forgot to take off this tape, but uh, I'm gonna pull that out from behind there. This was just to keep the clock spring in place. But uh, yep, we are very, very close. And then it'll be drivable. Let's put all the interior back together and it should be good to go. So that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below.